and we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our final week of our Quilt Sampler 2022 Sew Along. And today we are going to do binding. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so, of course, you can see here in front of your camera, it's not quite our quilt because you know what? I don't even have my second border on yet, and I definitely do not have it quilted. But I do have this really beautiful table runner that needs a binding, so I'm going to be using that as our example today. Um, Go ahead. Um, I hadn't planned on doing any kind of quilting video about how to pinning it or putting it together uh, for you to quilt it. Um, if anybody thinks that maybe that's something that they want, just let us know and we'll see if we can make another video to show how to pin the layers together. Um, in a uh, we'll go from there. But um, binding. So what I um a lot of patterns they will show different sizes half three inches depending again i you've probably heard this a few times over the um series but i think make things easier for my brain so 99 percent of my binding is all two and a half inch binding that way um i know how to do my seams i know which foot to use and i don't have to think all I think is binding and my brain knows what I'm supposed to be doing, usually. Um, so that being said, because this is just a straight edge of a quilt, we use straight. There's a lot of uh, people out there that say it has to be a bias binding because it's the thread count is different and stuff like that. I don't know how true that is. I know I use a bias binding if I have a curved edge, a scalloped edge, if I stretch around. But my quilt, I always use the straight of grain binding. I also always use a double fold binding. I think that's important because, um, well, I can show you. So if I was using a single fold binding, what you would end up doing is sewing your binding on, folding this corner over, folding it around. So this edge right here on our quilt has one single layer of fabric. That's a real wear spot on a quilt. So what, when we make a double binding, when we sew it on, it's got two different layers. It's a little bit thicker. I like the look of it better. And I think it might wear just a little bit better. Better. Um, I am also going to show you the, the way that um, I learned after I opened the store, actually, that the, when we join our binding, when we finish our quilt, you will never be able to tell where your binding stops and starts. And the corners will be a uh, perfect miter. And if you ever decide that you want to put a sh quilt in a show, that's one of the very is your binding. So we will touch all of those spots as we go. So let's put our binding together. So um, I've calculated how much strips that I need. Most of the patterns will tell you how much. If they don't, here's how you do that. So you take the measurements of your quilt and you add up all the sides. So this one, for example. So there. Thank you. So we're going to add up our sides. So it's 43 plus 54 plus 43 plus 54. We're going to add 12 inches to that measurement. And that's going to give us enough for our bias, our, our sorry, our diagonal seams and our corners. And then we're going to divide that measurement by 40. And that will give you how many strips that you need for your Clear as mud? Long story short, the number of strips you need to cut is on your border instructions. That's right. <laughs> That's right. For this one, we already have it. I think we cut six or seven. I can't remember. But in case someone altered the size, that would be extra. Of, I don't have any of these sewn together. Nope. Okay. So we're going to have to sew all of these together, which is good. We'll have a few times to uh, look. Um, 
All righty. So I always, always, always sew binding with a diagonal seam. Did you want this? Um, no, I got this one. This will be fine. And I will show it in two different ways. So I sew it in uh, with a diagonal seam because I should have had a piece of binding. If we sew it together with a straight seam, And then we fold it in half. So now you see we've got eight layers on this section. Then when we sew it and flip it and sew it, it's going to be so thick, you're going to see a bump in your quilt. When we sew it with a diagonal, and I'll show you as soon as I get a diagonal sewn, um, it's going to distribute all that width and it's or all that uh, bulk along that diagonal, and it's going to fit together much nicely, much nicer. <laughs> um, here's another thing. I think we talked about it when we did borders, but I always, always, always sew what I call my white or my, my printed, um, uh, salvage to my not printed salvage. This one, of course, this pink, it has white on both ends, but you can see one's narrow and one's wider. This is this is the opposite end. So when I sew them opposite ends together, I'll always make sure that if there's any direction in my fabrics, they will always be uh, the same. So I don't have to think again. So to cut to sew a diagonal, there's two ways that we can do it. I like to leave my salvages on. I use them for lining up, but this is the only way I can tell which end of the strip is which. So I use the line of my mat and I line my bottom fabric right side up, horizontal on the board. My next fabric, I am going to align it up and I'm using the salvages to help me align the strips. I can also use a line of a mat to help align the strips. This one goes vertical, right sides together. I am going to show you two different ways to sew it. So this first strip, strip will do the traditional way. So we want to sew from that corner to that corner. So I am just going to take some kind of marking device. And if this was um, in real life, I wouldn't make it so dark. I just want to make sure that you can see it. I can grab a couple pins and I'll put them out of my way. And I'm going to sew right on that line. I want to look, I can see that my line here is not quite in the corner. So I'm going to start on this side of the line and end up there. And off we go. Usually color to my binding. Today I've got a cream in here, but again, I'm pressing. Um, I should, if I press properly, you're not going to see my thread. So I'm going to start with my needle in the down position so I can line up that corner. And I am going to sew here along my line. Back to here. Can you still see that? Okay, so before I cut my corner off, I want to make sure that I sewed it in the right direction. I can open it up and everything's aligned up. So I know it is. So now what I can do is I can cut off at a quarter and I can cut that little dog ear dog, dog ear off and that little dog ear off and I'm ready to go. My next method of... We only have three, there it is. I have one more strip, two, I have two more strips, perfect. Okay, so um, again, I'm going to find out which end that I want to put, so the opposite ends together. My second method, if you have already used our folded corner, simple folded corner ruler. This is what I love to use with my binding and my borders. Again, it's not anything that I seen um, demoed with um, Antler Quilt Designs or Doug Lecco, but I just think it's so cool for binding and for borders. So I've got them lined up. 
I'm going to put that flat edge on the top strip, my solid dark line on the edge of my uh, vertical strip. Because I cut my, my um, binding at two and a half, my two and a half inch line lines up on this um, line of the, <laughs> the bottom strip. My two and a half lines up on this one. I know everything's nice and really straight. I can cut this off. I can cut that dog ear off at this time. I can put a pin over here to hold it if I like. And I'm going to go and sew this. Oops. Now with this one, I want to sew with my quarter inch foot because I've already managed to... Um, since we've got all these blocks done, we already know that we know we've got a perfect quarter inch seam. <laughs> and then I'm just going to sew here. Comrade, I am not ignoring your question. We'll touch on that a bit more later. Again, I want to be sewing with a 2.0 seam allowance. I know it's in the right direction. Stitch length. Or, I'm sorry, stitch length. The 2.0 stitch length. And I, again, made sure that it's correct. And now I'm going to press. These seams I want to press open. So let's go to the iron. Did we even press plug in our iron? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I should know you're on the ball, Tiff. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to our iron and we are going to go to our seams and we want to press these seams open. Again, it's all about reducing the bulk. So I'm just going to run my finger on there and I'm going to press that open. And of course, we've already pressed our fabric, but if there's a fold there, I'll press that here at this time as well. Get over here. So so that uh, your arms aren't in the way. Ah, oh, awesome. Sorry. We're good. Okay. Okay. I forgot to cut off that little dog ear. That's not a big issue. I can just grab my scissors that are magically disappeared. And I can just cut that off. So there's our seams. And now I want to fold this and press it in half. You can use a little bit of steam here if you like. I find it uh, stretches too much. If I, I, do, uh, I do. I um, do. I also burn my fingers. <laughs> so that's why I don't have the steam on. Sometimes if you're just um, if your fabric's not pressing nice, you want a little bit of a crisper crisp, I will take my steam and I will steam my wool mat. And that will put a little bit of dampness just right into the surface of my mat. And it's usually enough to just help me along I'm pressing sure this. See. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so you can see now that we press it, part of the seam is here and part of the seam is there. So instead of having that whole, you know, eight layers of fabric, it's reducing it along the length of our binding. Turn it this way. See? Which way? Yeah. This way? So you can see here, there's my one seam, my other seam. So it's taking all that bulk of the seam allowance and it's just distributing it a little bit farther so we get a much nicer binding. I don't necessarily sew my borders on diagonally, but I always sew my binding that way. Um, What's the question or? Oh, uh, Comrade asked what thread do you recommend for quilting? Uh, I figured you would talk about that when we were talking about the top <coughs> stitching binding. Um, well, I can do. For quilting, my actual quilting for the, um, uh, quilting the layers together. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, I'm a real cotton snob. I love top quality cotton fabric. So when I'm piecing my quilt, I love top quality cotton thread, um, which is 
in my world or Phil. I like that one the most. Um, but when you're actually quilting, it depends on how you're quilting it. I have quilted quilts with Aurifil thread, and it works really well. But if you're doing any kind of free motion quilting, I find you're going to have a much better chance of success if you use a polyester thread. Um, there's a few that are made specifically for the long arm, like So Fine. It's a 50 weight um, uh, polyester. Um, I of an isocord embroidery thread. So it is again uh, geared towards machine embroidery. So it has a lot of strength to it. So when you're moving that fabric back and forth and putting all that strain on the needle, it's going to hold up a heck of a lot better than what the cottons do. Um, I have had um, a really poor luck with some of the other brands of uh, threads, but those are the ones that I like the best. Alrighty. Um, okay, so a couple things to think about. Binding size. When I'm sewing with a two, um, normally I use my binding size is always two and a half. But there is one exception. If I have a quilt that has no border on it, I want to make sure that when I put my binding on it, I don't cut off the corners. So when I cut my binding at two and a half, I sew it on with my regular foot, which is in my case, the OA foot for the FOF. Zero. The zero A. It is approximately from the middle point of where our needle is to the edge of our foot is approximately three eighths of an inch. And when I cut two and a half inch binding, that's normally the one that I use to sew the binding on. If I sew it on with a quarter inch foot, when I fold it over, it will overlap really far. Or if you just fold it over to the, the your seam, your binding's going to be empty and it doesn't have a great look. You always want to make sure that your quilt is filling your bind, your um, yeah, filling your binding up perfectly. So if I have seams or if I have no borders on my quilt and I have piecing that goes right to the edge of the quilt, that's the time that I want to use a two and a quarter inch binding and I want to sew it on with a quarter inch foot so I don't lose all those points that we try so hard not to, uh, you know, we want them to stay there if we're going to do that. So this is two and a half inch binding on a border. I am going to sew it with a three eighths inch seam allowance. And I will talk again a little bit as we go on um, um, when we fold it over what I meant about covering the seams and stuff. When I actually get it sewn, it will look well. So traditionally, when you put binding on a quilt, you sew it to the front and you fold it over and you hand sew it to the back. That's what I'm going to do with this table runner. I have another sample that I'm going to sew it to the back and sew it by machine on the front. So if it's anything important, all of my quilts, especially my heirloom quilts, my gifts, I sew to the front and hand sew to the back. It's what you want to see if it's a show quilt or something special, an heirloom. That's the way you're going to want to do it. If I'm doing lap quilts, or baby quilts that I know that I want them to be used and abused. They're going to go in the washer, maybe in the dryer, um, but they're going to be dragged around, cuddled up with a couch. I like to sew those on the back, flip them to the front, and machine sew them to the front as well as the back. And it, um, I find it's just a little bit more secure than hand stitching. All right, so let's go. So what I am going to do is I am going to leave a spot about, what is that? A foot, foot and a half, depending on your, your item, that that's where I'm going to join my edges. So, and again, I'm going to leave a good eight inches or so of uh, my binding loose. I can use straight pins. I can use wonder clips and I can clip these onto the edge 
I love the Wonder Clips for things that are already quilted for heaviness, um, for bags when I'm doing my binding. It just holds a little bit better. So I cannot go all the way around pinning and folding and that and then just sew because we have to treat each corner differently. So I'm going to pin from the edge to the center right to this first corner. And now I'm going to sew that on. Are you lined up there? I just have to change the settings on my machine. This machine has an automatic presser foot lift. When I'm sewing binding or um, quilting, I like that uh, function off. So I just remove that right now. All righty. So I'm aligning the raw edge of my binding. My fold is out here. I'm aligning the raw edge of my binding to the raw edge of my quilt that is trimmed absolutely perfectly. After we quilt it, we want to trim it again so it's got a nice straight edge. And I'm going to sew again with just the width of that foot. It's approximately three eighths of an inch. And I just want to back stitch a little bit. A couple stitches just to lock that in. And off we go. So I'm going to stop here for a moment. I do not want to sew right off of the quilt. Mm. So I'm going to get close. I am yeah. drawing. I am drawing on this with a sharp uh, with the uh, friction marker, just so you can see. So the edge of my quilt is right there. My three eighths of a seam allowance comes here. There's about. So I can either stop whatever this distance is here from the edge, and I can back stitch. Or what I like to do is stop at that or even a little bit less. I'm going to pivot and I'm going to sew right off the corner. And that's going to keep our corner nice and flush. I got to, um, I have to be careful that I don't sew too far. It has to be a, at the very least a 45 degree. It's okay if it's a stitch less. It's not going to make any difference, but not a stitch more. So I am going to sew up to the edge. If you want... You can measure that three eighths, put a pin. That's where I am going to sew two. I'm going to put my needle down and I'm going to lift my foot. I am now going to pivot my fabric, put my foot, whoops, I did that in the wrong direction. There we go. Put my foot down and I'm going to sew right off the corner. The corner of my quilt is right there you can see it so i'm going to sew right off the corner of my quilt and once i get off the quilt i'm going to cut my thread so i ran not quite on the corner i missed the corner a little bit but that's perfectly fine this is not going to undo because i have that angle going to be absolutely perfect so I want to take the quilt right out of the machine and I'm going to turn it so the next side is aligned up exactly where I want it to be to sew. I'm going to take my binding and I'm going to fold it up. So it basically runs along that stitch. But the important part is that the raw edge of my binding is exactly in line with the raw, raw edge of my quilt. I don't want it at an angle. I want to be exactly perfectly aligned with the edge of my quilt and I will have a 45 degree fold here. I can press that with my finger a little bit. I'm going to hold it, grab my binding. I am going to flip it down. So the fold of my binding lines up perfectly with the top edge of my quilt. I don't want it down too far and I don't want it up there. You're not gonna be able to turn your corner. You want to line it up absolutely perfect. I can put some clips in here. 
I can align this up down to the other edge. Oh, here's another really good thing. If you have a walking foot on your machine, use it to put your binding on. It's normally a walking foot on most machines are approximately this width or figure out if you have to put it in a little bit. But because we have so many layers of fabric, the walking foot works really well for you to use to put your binding on. And on your FAF machine, just make sure your IDT is engaged. So now I'm going to sew right from the edge of my quilt. And I think I just pulled my thread yep, out. I just pulled my thread out. <laughs> Let me just thread this again. <laughs> the pressures of life. Okay, I'm just going to double check to make sure nothing shifts. And my fold is where I want it to be. Again, I'm sewing with the 2.0 seam allowance. And I'm going to sew down this side to the other corner. And we're just going to continue on all the way around our table runner or our quilt or our wall hanging. Is there any other questions that we can do while we're... No one else has asked. Bev says she is still putting her second border on as well. Okay, so I'm coming to my second corner. Here's one thing that I'm okay. My seam is not right on the corner. Sometimes I will lay my binding out to see where my seams are going to hit because you really kind of not want it to hit on the corner if at all possible. The edge of my quilt is right here. I'm going to sew three eighths of an inch away, needle down, foot up, pivot my quilt, foot down and sew right off that corner. And then you're going to take your machine back or your um, quilt back out of your machine. I'm just going to get rid of this thread that's there. Our second quarter. Again, lie it. So your quilt, you're ready to sew this next side. Fold my binding straight up. So the raw edge matches the raw edge of my quilt. Hold that 45 fold, fold my binding back down, aligning the new fold of my um, binding to the top edge of my quilt, aligning that up. Again, we can pin it. I'm gonna live dangerously. I do have the walking foot on there, so it shouldn't, it should be pretty good by the time I get to the end. Keeping those raw edges together. to stop and I'm going to find the edge of that quilt. I just put a pin in there again so I can mark it so I know where it is. I want to sew approximately three eighths of an inch from the edge. Oops. 
Knee down, foot up. I'm going to pivot and I'm going to sew off that corner. Cut my thread. My third side again, lining up. I had a girlfriend that came in and she I was always having uh, problems with binding, remembering it. So she came in to sew for a day and she brought eight placemats. By the time she got all the binding on the placemats, she remembered how to do this process. Um, don't be afraid or don't be um, give yourself a hard time. If you do a quilt, do the binding, go to the next quilt and you forget how to do the binding. When you do things with quilting, they say you have to do at least four times before they really stick in your brain. So you're always going to have to go back. This video will be there. So the next time you do a binding, it's always nice to refresh, go back and see, you know, remember how we did this. Okay, so raw edge, flipping it right up. They're perfectly aligned, my two raw edges. 45, my fold along the top. Again, remember, perfectly aligned with that edge. So from the edge down to the next side. We're coming along to our first, our last side. Oh, I'll show you that in a minute. I've got a long thread here that gets caught in my hand. So I'm just taking that off. Okay, so before I do this corner, I want to make sure this is my last side. I want to make sure, remember, I want to leave that opening. Here's where I have a hard time. I come whizzing down that side and I forget to leave the opening. So I end up too short and it really makes my life difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take two pins and place them in my quilt. So now when I'm coming down that side, I'll know that's where I have to stop. It's just a little reminder that I don't get carried away. Alrighty, again, straight edge ready to sew. I am folding. You can, um, I don't know if you can see well in here. If I pull really tight up until my seam, my seam didn't line up on my corner, this edge is not lined up with this edge of the quilt. I do not want to do that. I want to just fold it. So the raw edge is exactly in line with the raw edge of my quilt. It's not quite lined up on that little stitch, that corner stitch, but that's okay. That's all in the seam allowance anyways. So the raw edge is lined up perfectly with the edge of my quilt. Fold to the edge at the top. Sewing my last seam. There's my pins. And I just want to take a couple back stitches here. So we're going to go over to the table and I'm going to show you how to join these two ends. Thank you. 
So remember before we sewed our piece on a diagonal, we want to do that again on our quilt. Um, when I first started quilting, what they, end, sorry, what they ended up doing is they would, let's just cut this end flush because I'm going to have to do that anyways. I want to get rid of this seam allowance. So I'm just going to take the edge of my ruler. I'm going to line it up on the fold of my strip and cut that off. So what we learned before was you take your binding, you fold it on a diagonal, sew it like this. When this one comes along, you tuck it in there and then you have to stitch it. It never joined properly. It was always loose. I always had a really awful time with doing that. Um, I don't remember who was the person that showed me how to do it this other way, but it was just like, oh my gosh, why didn't we always do it that way? It just made way more sense to my brain. Everything fit together perfectly. And um, at the end of the day, you don't know where you stopped, where you finished, or if it was just another join of the two bindings. So I want to be able to lay my quilt nice and flat. And I'm just going to cut this a little shorter because I sort of want it to be sort of in the center of that opening. So I'm just going to take another little piece of this off just to make it a little shorter. Okay. Now I have to cut this binding to a specific length. I want it to overlap my, my other binding by the width of my strip. So our binding is two and a half inches. So it is going to overlap our bottom strip by two and a half inches. It just so happened that this little ruler is exactly two and a half inches. Makes my life easier. I am just going to align the edge of my ruler on my fold. So you're lining the left side of your ruler to the under? I am lining the left side of my ruler. I have my top stitch. Uh, my top strip just staggered a little bit so I can see where my bottom strip is. I'm going to align the edge of my ruler so it's just to say past. Remember when we put a line of our ruler on our, on our fabric? We don't want to. We want to put it just to say that it's on the uh, just past our edge. And I'm just going to draw my line little bit easier for us to see that way. I am now going to put it to the side and to cut it. Don't cut it with scissors. You want that nice square edge. Use your rotary cutter and a ruler. Okay, so remember when we put our border together, our bottom one was horizontal right side up. The top one was vertical right side down. Exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to open up this strip right side up this strip will open up right side down i'm going to grab my quilt and i'm going to twist it this way oh here's a really good point when we're doing a really large quilt we always would like to put the bulk of our quilt on the table to do this join you are going to get a twist in there every single time i do i can't get my brain around it the trick is have your quilt on your lap or on your tummy or towards you, and you're not going to get that binding twisted. And if you, if you do get it twisted, just remember, quilt has to be down here. We want to be working at the top of our quilt. All right, so left side, right side up, horizontal right side, right side down. So I have to turn my quilt and align these edges up. I can either take my, my um, folded corner ruler here. Sometimes it's really difficult to cut because we didn't leave enough space. So I will do it old school way. So for just an instant, just for a little bit, I moved it over a little bit just so I can see where this corner is here. I am going to take my 
marking device. And I am going to draw again from this corner. So from this corner here to where the corner, um, it doesn't intersect, but where the corner shows up from the bottom strip. So now that I've marked it, I'm going to realign it back to the edge of my bottom strip. So I just moved it over just to mark my line. I'm going to put a couple pins in here. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew again just to say that I'm on the right side of that line. And I do that because I can see that I really missed the corner when I drew. my reverse on so everything's aligned now before I cut that corner for sure for sure for sure I want to make sure that I didn't get something twisted so it lies flat. It doesn't have a twist in there. I'm happy. This line isn't quite long. No, maybe it is. It works. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I can either go to my rotary cutter and I can cut the quarter inch seam. Or because I'm at my sewing machine, I can just grab my scissors and I can cut approximately a quarter inch seam off. I want to press that open. Again, I find if you want to use the iron, feel free, but um, because normally I've got a huge quilt here, I will just use my fingernail. I will press this seam open. And I will align this. And I do definitely on this point want to put a few pins or a few clips just to hold things together from sliding. So back to the sewing machine. I don't want it to come undone here. So I'm gonna start a couple inches up into my seam. Sorry, I oh, can't see what you're talking about. Okay. So this is where my seam finished. So I don't wanna start, just start sewing there just in case threads start to undo in time. So I want to leave it an inch or two. And so I'm going to start up here and I'm going to sew farther on on the other side. I want to have my purple thing handy. It's Bold of you not to use a lock stitch. Oh, I didn't use, no. Well, see, I didn't use the lock stitch. So because I've overlapped two inches, I'm going to be just fine. <laughs> you should generally use a back stitch or a lock stitch. You definitely should use a back stitch, a couple stitches or something there. Yeah, exactly. Here's my seam. I want to make sure that that's going to stay where it's supposed to be. Sometimes it wants to pucker a little bit. A lot of times, too, when we get to the end, it's going to want to pucker a little bit. It wants to overlap and pucker. So a lot of times the pucker's on this side. So if you flip it over here, it's not going to show there. So I really don't care about it. But here's one of the times where you will see I will grab the back of my quilt and the front of my quilt. Give it a little tug so things And I can sew the finish. I'm going to overlap an inch or so. And then I'm going to lock stitch it. Whoops, that didn't work. That was the wrong button. And our binding is totally sewn onto our quilt. And now what I want to do is just give it a little bit of a press. Just grab my board here. So 
So while you have it laid out, we did have a question about choosing the color for your top stitching. Top stitching for quilting, for the quilting, quilting layers? layers? Um, a lot of that is a personal choice. So on this quilt here, I could have picked um, a few different colors. I could have used a pink because there's pink in there, which would have been really nice on the border. But if I would have choose it in here, it probably might be a little dark. A lot of times I like to pick maybe more on the dark side than the light side. Um, I use a lot of neutrals. So because I have beige here, I thought maybe the beige would be nice and it definitely works. It shows up on the darker fabrics, but not as much on the light fabrics. But I ended up with this one using this soft yellow. It just seemed to just blend in a little bit darker on my darker, or a little bit better on my darker fabrics. Sometimes if you're having a quilt and you're just doing an overall, you have to decide kind of how you're going to quilt it, whether you want the dark fabric to show up in your light fabric, or the dark thread to show up in your light fabric, or thread to show up on your dark fabric. So a lot of times we use a, um, a little bit of a neutral. We could have even used this pink if we wanted to. So it just kind of blends, but it's not as stark as a white. Um, 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 um. We could have used a green. When I decided I wanted to quilt this, I know I wanted to use just, oh, thank you. So there's a white. I don't know how well this shows up on the camera, but that thread is going to be much more noticeable on our fabrics than the colors that we choose. When we're doing free motion quilting, stuff like that, we always try to blend our color. Most of the time we try to blend our color with the background fabric or with what we're quilting. So we will change things unless you want to do something absolutely wild like that and have your stitching show. This is for my other um let's see a lot of times if you're doing free motion quilting if I was going to be doing something in these green squares I would have definitely used a green thread and I would have just changed up on the back I try to use the same color um, unless you have really stark differences some people will use the same bobbin thread as they do on the top so you don't see any pokey throughs we did use a pink bobbin thread on this one So that's um, also a personal choice. Um, but rule of thumb is um, if we have to match a color, we might have something that's a shade darker than our, our background color um, because it'll show less on the dark than a dark thread would show on the white. Make sense? Clear as mud. <laughs> Okay, my iron is heated. So what I want to do is give a little pressing to my um, binding. All I want to do is press it out. Press the corner just a little bit. And I just want to press it out. I do not want to wrap it around and, and press it. I don't want a sharp crease on the edge. Just where my seam is. So this one, because it's a little special, I want to sew it by hand. So I sewed the binding by machine on the front, and then I am going to go to the back and sew it by hand. And I don't know how well the internet is today, but I'm gonna do my best to demo that, hopefully that you can see. Um, so <coughs> as of right now, I'm just looking because I know where it was. This was my seam that I butted, but it won't be any different than any of the other seams. So there's no way that somebody can tell where you started, where you stopped. Okay, let's do some hand sewing. Color of thread. Normally, I would match my thread to the color of my binding. We will be sewing it on the back. 
I would normally match the color of my thread to the color of my binding. That being said, I'm going to use this brighter one today, just hopefully so you can see it a little bit better. I wonder if I should almost use maybe a black or something, just so they can see it well. Just going to give you a little demo here. I can unpack it for you later if you use the black. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, so here is our quilt. And here is our binding. I'm just going to give you a better demo. So there is the edge of our quilt. So this, say, is our binding. This is the fold of our binding. I do not want to use a whip stitch. If I was using a whip stitch on a fold, you would end up getting these little marks in your binding and you would see all your stitches. In a perfect world, we don't want to see our stitches at all on our quilt. So I like to use, um, it's the stitch that hand appliqueers use. I like to call it a ladder stitch. And here's how you do that. So this is our quilt. This is our binding. So this is our binding. So what I want to do is I'm going to knot my thread and I'm going to pull it up underneath the fold of my binding. So this is the fold that we just have that's loose on our quilt. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go in the fold of my um, binding. I'm going to go under and come right back out. And I'm going to show you again in real life. So then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to come out of my backing fabric. I'm going to put my needle in and do a stitch this way. I'm going to go come back up into my binding through the fold, back into my quilt, through the quilt. So it's going to kind of look like a ladder. Once I pull that tight, it's going to disappear totally. And I have black thread on pink fabric, so you will see what I mean. Um, I'm going to use a little bit larger needle today than I normally do. And I forgot my thimble at home. Um, I don't know if Pat has one in her drawer or not. Normally, I like to use these little size 8 quilting needles. They're really tiny. I like to take small stitches. And these little needles make sure that I take little stitches. Because my stitches are probably only around a quarter inch wide. So some people um, double their thread. I don't. Thank you. I hope it's not too big. So I take a piece approximately that long. If you take a really, really. Approximately how long? That long. What? Um, it's approximately 20, 25 inches long. I find if I take something longer than that, it's not going to, I'm going to get it all tangled. Or the, by the time that you go through your quilt so much times to get to the end, your, my thread's going to break. So I want to knot my thread. Okay, the way my mom taught me to knot my thread. Hold, I'm gonna zoom in, keep it over the paper, please. I am going to just wrap it around my finger. I am going to roll it and then pinch it and pull and I'll have this knot at the end of my string. It's a pretty, ugly knot, but it's going to hold. It's not the same knot that you would use if you're hand quilting. And for the life of me, I can't remember how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you use your new needle and pull it through. I'm going to have to research that. You know that I'm not a hand quilter. So I'm going to start over here somewhere just so I can make sure that we get to see a corner. But I'm going to fold my corner first. I'm just going to take a little bit of the tip of the corner off just to reduce the bulk. I'm going to look at this side of my quilt and you can see that's my fold. I want to make sure that my fold is in the opposite direction on the back. Um, there was a cute, some lady was in here the one time and uh, she has a cute way for me to remember how to do this. See how it looks like a nose and it has two nostrils. 
Well, the nostrils are going in the same direction. When I do my binding, I want to make sure that my nostrils are folded so they go in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was kind of cute. Okay, so you can say I have a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I am just going to mark this right here just so you can see a little bit better. It's a friction marker, so hopefully it'll all wash out. So that's where my seam is. I want to, in a perfect world, when I sew, my binding is just going to cover that seam allowance. And it is full. It is pulled right up around over and just covers my stitches. I don't want to, if I would have sewn with the quarter inch seam, it would have only folded that far. And I could feel emptiness in my binding. I really want to make sure that it stays nice and full. All right. So before I get there, I'm going to put in a couple clips. And here's where I love the Wonder Clips for two reasons. It's hard to pin. Pins distort. But because I'm doing handwork, I end up picking myself with the pins and I bleed all over my quilt. So this way I don't do that. All righty. So I want to fold this so my nostril goes in the opposite direction. So the side, because I'm right-handed, the side that I'm working on folds right up to the edge of my quilt. I'm going to hold that with my finger and I'm going to stick, hold, fold it down. This side again is um, my seam allowance. My seam is right here. So I'm covering my seam. I'm folding this down. This corner here, I want to line up exactly with the edge of this binding. And I can put my clip right on that corner. And I can put a couple clips up this side. I usually have a good half dozen or eight 10 clips working my way around. I'll put a few clips, do some pinning, put a few clips, do some pinning. Um, this is our quality together time with your hubby. So when you're doing a movie and you, or he wants to watch a movie with you and you know, you really want to do your handwork, you can say, yes, dear, we'll watch a movie. And you can sit there and do all your handwork while we watch the movie. My husband says to me, he says, when's the last time you ever watched a movie and not just listened to it? Um, I think, uh, what was the name of that movie? Not the bird box, but there was the one where you can't make noise. They don't speak in the movie. I ended up having to put my stuff down and watch, watch it. Okay. So I've got my knot. I'm just going to grab it in my seam allowance and I am going to come out just underneath the stitching. I am not going through. I like don't want just a thread underneath the stitching, sorry. Yeah, just a thread underneath the stitching. Okay. I've I'm in my bind batting. I'm not through to this side. I never want these stitches to go through in here. It's just going to be in in my quilt part. In my batting and in my back layer of my quilt. Okay, so now that I came out, how are we here, Tiff? So view-wise. Um, can someone let us know how uh how that's coming out on the other end. Are you guys able to see this? I think we're good. Okay. I so here's my fold and that's our trick. I don't want to go through my fold because you can see my stitch. What I want to do, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I started all over. I don't want to see my stitches. I want these to disappear totally. Um, again, if something shows, if we're using matching thread, it's not going to show too much. So I'm down, coming out underneath my seam. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go up into the fold of my fabric, not right through. And I'm going to go along the fold of my fabric. About a quarter inch. Is that a quarter inch? A not quarter even. Inch? No, even, that's even less than a quarter inch. Maybe an eighth at most. Maybe yeah. an eighth. Yeah, of an maybe inch. an eighth. So there was my one bar. So where I came out on my binding on the top, I'm going to go into my quilt at the exact same spot. I'm going to go over that same amount of distance, somewhere around an eighth, in between an eighth and a quarter. 
about three millimeters for those uh, metric people. Metric people, yes. Then I'm going to, from where that is, I'm going to go up into my fold, not through, back up my needle and go along. Fold. Where I came out, I'm going to go into my quilt and over. Again, I'm not stitching all the way through. In my fold, once you get the motion in my quilt, I can do two stitches. I can go in my fold. Where I came out of my fold, I'm going to go into my quilt and along my quilt. So you can see all those stitches there have resumed in good enough. Your hand's in the way. My hand's in the way. So here's the magic. I left that loose and is, so you could see. I'm going to give this a tug. So other than that first stitch where I showed you not what to do, even using black thread, it doesn't show whatsoever. Not on this side and on this. So I want to show you the corner, so I'm just going to continue stitching in my fold, in my quilt, in my fold, in my quilt. If your, your thread starts twisting, just give your needle a spin so it untwists. There is also, um, if you have a real hard time with your thread, there's um, a product called Thread Heaven or beeswax that you can run your thread in so it doesn't twist as much. Give that a little tightness. I'm coming into my corner now. So I'm going to take one more stitch like this and I'm going to stitch in my binding, stitch in my quilt and on this seam right here, they call that the toe catcher. We want to stitch that down. So I came up in my fold and I'm just going to go across in my binding and I'm going to take two or three stitches in there and sometimes here it shows a little bit more. My corner's not quite lined up. I can take my needle and I can adjust my fold so the uh, corner of my uh, binding matches up with the other side. I'm going to come right into this corner. Again, in that fold, I like to take a really tiny stitch here in my backing, catching some of my bind, um, my batting, and then I'm going to continue on down this other side in my fold, in my backing, in my fold. Okay, so say we've continued on and we ran out of thread. How do we finish it? So my last stitch was in my binding. I'm going to take right where it came out of my binding. I'm going to stick it in my backing. I'm going to run my needle up through to the other side of my seam that's going to be hidden under my binding. I'm going to make sure that that's tugged nice and tight. Grab my thread and I want to put a knot in there. So I'm going to grab my thread. I'm twisting it over and sticking my needle through the loop. I'm just going to hold my finger so that knot is close to my fabric. I can put my needle back where that knot was and it's in between my quilt and my binding. I mean, sorry, my quilt and my batting. I'm going to give that a little tug and that's going to pull my knot right inside and we're good to go. I can start a new thread and continue on. Not too bad. Even with black, black thread. Okay, so you think, oh, you just don't want to do hand. So what would we do to sew it all by machine? So exactly the same way that we did before this is the back so i sewed in 
of sewing the binding on the front of my quilt and flipping it to the back. This time I want to do exactly the opposite. I haven't joined this binding yet. I've got the binding sewn on. I haven't joined it yet only because I want to go over that one more time. That join is a little bit difficult sometimes for people. So I have my opening. I'm going to cut one of my strips off sort of somewhere in between. Uh, there's not a lot of fabric there, so be careful. Ah, okay. Um, I lost my... Yep, is it there? Yep. Okay. My rotary cutter. I think it wasn't open. Now, with this quilt, we had um, already in the bin, there was two and a quarter inch binding. So this one was cut two and a quarter. So I have to think. I want it to overlap by only two and a quarter. The last one, our binding was two and a half. We so we overlapped it by that. So this one has a thinner binding. We sewed this on with the quarter inch foot. And um, I want it again to overlap only two and a quarter. That's not required though for doing top stitching on the front. That's exactly. It's just so happened that this was binding that we had done for this sample. I just wanted to use it. So it was a two and a quarter. Um, I always use two and a half for, like I said, 99% of all my quilts. So I want to align the two, two and a quarter inch line line on the bottom of it there's my two and a quarter inch line just to say it's past the bottom i'm going to draw my registration mark i'm going to move this off of my quilt align the edge of my ruler with the edge and i'm going to join it identically the way we did before so the fabric on my left, I'm going to open it up, right, make sure my quilt's on my lap. The fabric on my right is right side down. I'm going to turn it so this one can be vertical. I want to draw my line. If I do have the ruler, let's see if I can use the... Um, folded corner ruler if I have more room on this one. Thank you. My flat edge on the top, my edge on the, uh, my solid line on the side. Again, it's two and a quarter. So my two and a quarter inch mark is here and on the edge of my strip. We're gonna cut that off and we're gonna give that a sew. Whoops, it's shifted on me. Give me a second. I didn't pin it. I should have pinned it. Trying to save time and I'm wasting time. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I don't even have my quarter inch foot on here. So I'm kind of <laughs> winging this. I've aligned the corner of my bottom strip with the corner of my diagonal seam tape here. So that's what I'm using to sew my quarter inch seam. Let's see how well I did. I didn't get a, a fold in it or a spin, so I'm good there. I can open this up with my finger. Yep, that's pretty good. Not too bad. I do want to put a couple clips here. And then let's sew that on. Again, overlap an inch or so. Do a couple back stitches or a lock stitch, depending on what your sewing machine is. I am going to stop at this point because I do have to have the quarter inch foot on here. Mm. Yes. I just cannot do it. Because it's a two and a quarter inch binding, I need the two and a quarter inch foot. Can I ask you a question real quick? Which, yeah. Which color of thread would you like for your top stitcher? Um, 
Let's use a dark blue so they can see it. Okay, or it's, it's black. Front, though. Okay, let's use black. Just so they can see it on this. All right, let's lock stitch. That's a little bit easier to line up. I can see that this is not quite folded right. I'm just gonna fix that. Lining it up with the edge of my quilt. So I have a little bit of sticky out here and that's because I didn't sew it with my quarter inch foot. So my seam was off a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about it. Nobody's gonna see it at the end of the day because I'm gonna just trim that off. It's inside my, um, inside my binding. Shh, don't tell anybody. Overlap an inch or so and either back stitch or tack stitch and we're good to go. And I have pressed it again the same way as I did before, but I am just pressing that one little piece because I have pressed the whole thing already. Um, where are we here? Okay. Again, before I get to the sewing machine, I want to get some corners done. Again, I'm going to trim that little bit off just so I can turn my corner. Again, my nostril is going in that direction. So I definitely want to fold it. So it's covering this seam because I'm sewing by sewing machine. I want to make sure that it's definitely covering that seam at the bottom. Here's also another neat place. Instead of pinning, I use my seam align glue. Makes life so much easier. So we can use the seam align glue. And we're going to put a couple dots here. I am going to align this just so it's covering my previous stitching line. And I'm going to glue it right off the side. And it didn't stick. I have to do a little bit of confession time here. I love the glue. And sometimes when you are time restrained and you have to do a sample for the guild, it's on display. If you just glue your binding all the way around, nobody knows that it's just glued and I can sew it the next day. <laughs> but I never did that. Uh -uh, I'll deny it. Again, remember um, that we sewed up. Just uh, had a request to confirm that with the machine binding, you sew to the back first. Exactly. When we're doing machine binding, I sew it to the back and flip it to the front. Because we are going to actually see the front, that's the first thing that we're going to see. I want to make sure that this looks perfect. If there's any imperfection, and there will be, I want that to be on the back. All right. So our corner again folds. I can use my purple thing or a pin. Make sure that this is folded so it aligns up. So it's a perfect perpendicular to the um, other side. I can't really see. Over you there. can't see over there over my fat fingers. <laughs> and we're going to line this up on the edge. And I'm just going to use for lack of our little bit of speed I'm going to use my clips which is usually the way that I do it I'm going to start sewing here and we're going to sew around the corner um couple different feet to use so with my thumb one more we can use our regular foot 
and we can um, this foot here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to zoom in on this. Too. There's um, some little red lines here. One second. Hold, hold on. I'm going to have to get over top of you then. Okay. Is it better on the white? Yeah, it's probably no. better on the white. No, it was good mm -hmm. on the black. Okay, you can see the red marks? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a red mark there. So if this is the foot that I had to use, I would align that red mark up at the edge of my quilt and I will do my stitching. I want to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of my binding. That's my least favorite. The one that I've been using before is this open toe applique foot. Um, I will use this one for a bit and show you because it is um, very visible. We can see what we're doing. I am going to align my um, seam allowance up with the edge of the foot. My brand new favorite, of course, this is only um, for fast. I don't know if the other machines have a foot like this, but this is called a bi-level foot. On the back, the toe that's on the left-hand side is thicker than the toe on the right-hand side. So it sort of just catches that top stitching. It's for top stitching, but it catches that seam and it will guide right through. There's a little red mark right there that I can align up with the edge of my fabric. And then I just move my needle over to sew where it wants. Most people don't have that foot, so I am going to use my open toe foot, which is my preferred foot if I don't have the bi level. So I'm going to attach my open toe foot. I am going to start up here. Remember, this is the front of our quilt. Am I? I'm blocking your foot pedal. Hold on. Uh, don't put your camera on my foot pedal. Sorry, guys. So normally the color of my thread on the top will match my binding. My bobbin will match my uh, backing. So in this case, I'd have yellow on the top and blue on the back. Right now I have white on the back and black on the top, just so you can see. Because I wanna show you what will happen in a perfect world and it doesn't usually happen to me. Alrighty. So I took the foot and I'm aligning this little toe. So it's on my quilt. So my binding will align up right with the toe. I am able to move the needle on my sewing machine. So I am going to move it to the left. So I am stitching approximately that close to the edge. So with this machine, I had to move it over. Um, it's I'm using a minus 3.0. And I'm sewing my binding. I like to move my stitch up to a two and a half or a three. And that's just mimicking some hand stitching. Um, normally, I use a two and a half. So a two and a half stitch. 2.5. 2.5 stitch length. Okay. Just grab my seam. I want to do a lock stitch. And now I'm going to sew, I'm going to guide my quilt so my binding butts tight up against that foot. Take it off of reverse. And I'm going to sew to the corner. Making sure that I'm covered that stitch by about at least that eighth of an inch. to stitch down. I like to use a flower head pin. It's nice and thick. So I'll jam it in here and hold that in place. So I'm going to stitch down until I'm approximately the same distance onto this border. I'm sorry, onto this side of the binding. Leave my needle in the down position, lift my foot, and I'm going to pivot around the corner. Um, while you're here, can, I'm just want to. I'm going to take it. See the the stitching. Stitching. I'm going to take it out. We're going to see it over there. 
after I want to show them the back. And then we're going to stitch down this side. And then we'll do the same thing on the other corner. Alrighty, so let me have a peek on the back. Okay. So in a perfect world, what we want happening is our stitch line will be in the ditch on the back. That's why I would like to use blue thread back here. If we pull it a little bit farther, we're going to have it a little bit farther away from our seam. But so long as we're consistent, it's not going to show. And we're going to use, like I said, the blue bobbin thread. So it's just going to look like a line of stitching that's on the back. On occasion, we slip off the ditch and we go up on the sidewalk. Um, give yourself some leeway, especially since this is the thing that we're using for lap quilts and baby quilts and things that are going to be loved. But if we can be a little bit more perfect, we want it to be close like this, not far away, but I'm okay with that as well. And on the front. You move too much. <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to get it still. I want to get it out of the way. So on the front that you can see that you will have this stitch line. Another day we'll talk about magic binding. But um, this is, again, like I said, this is not something that you're going to want to sew it like this and put it in a, a, a judged show or um, all my heirloom quilts, the ones that I make for birthdays or anniversaries, graduations that I want these people to keep them and love them for a long, long time. Um, they are always done by hand. Can you get me the hand corner there? So I just want to line. So um, there's the corner. There's the corner of the one that we sewed on the front. It just gives a much nicer line than what the other one does. Again, I would be using yellow thread on here. And then on the back, again, you're going to um, not see any stitches. Everything's going to be absolutely perfect, wonderful. So it basically looks the same on the front as it does on the back. Again, like I said, um, it's going to take you a few quilts before this technique gets stuck in your head. Um, but there's always um, the video that you can go back and refer to. Um, I don't know. Is there any other questions? Bev Hansberger says beautiful table runner. Thank you. Martine says she quite enjoys this part of. Um, I love the handwork. I really do. Um, I used to do a lot of cross stitch and stuff, but my eyes are bad enough that I, I can't do the little pen anymore but I really do love the hand stitching that finish that it's it's a perfect edge and um I don't know it's really satisfying me too I guess this is the end of the project it is so it has been 13 14 weeks now um I can't believe the time has gone by so fast um you know what it really did what I said it was, I was hoping it for to do at the beginning. I am overwhelmed by the response that I have gotten. Um, the, the people from all over the world that I, I can't believe little old me in Northern Ontario is, you know, they're watching my videos. Um, but it's gotten me over this winter slump. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, maybe next winter again, we'll have to stay tuned. We'll have to come up with something new. Um, but in the meantime, keep quilting. Um, enjoy your gardens and, and all your kids and grandkids. But keep quilting. And with this, I am just going to say goodbye now and happy quilting.